Today I've got some bad news, some good news, and some good news. So stay tuned. Welcome back to GamerMeld, the place where gaming and hardware unite. Today leads us to Overclockers UK, where the retailer did an interview with James Pryor, AMD's senior product manager, and he had a few interesting things to say. If you want to see the entire interview, I'll have that linked in the description. In the meantime, I want to go over quite a few of the more interesting points he made. Unfortunately, much of it was at least a little vague, so some things were really clear, but others could have just been misspoken or misinterpreted. First are the absolutes. James Pryor reassured us what we've been told in the past, that AM4 will, without a doubt, be supported until 2020. That means anyone who purchased an AM4 motherboard for first generation Ryzen will be able to use it for AMD's next two product launches at least. He went even more specific in the interview to state that, at least in a perfect world, which hopefully is the Ryzen world, the process is basically a hot swap with nothing but a BIOS update. Of course, I have no doubt there will be new motherboards as new technology comes out that offer things like new ports, stuff like that, but AMD is keeping their promise for backwards compatibility with AM4, which is a great thing in my book. Speaking of future Ryzen CPUs, James Pryor also confirmed that Ryzen's next generation chips will run off an improved Zen 1 architecture, making a TikTok type of pattern for a completely new architecture in 2019. So think of Ryzen 2000 series as like Zen 1.5. One really interesting thing he did say when referring to the upcoming improved Zen architecture was the new process by Global Foundry. He's almost certainly referring to the new 12 nanometer process that the manufacturer announced just a few months ago. This perfectly coincides with leaks from September that told us just that. Basically, AMD plans to fight just as hard next year as they did in 2017. I have no doubt that while the IPC probably won't be much different, the clocks will hopefully be improved quite dramatically. So while no, they won't be offering a completely new architecture, users will at least get a nice die shrink. The last thing James Pryor said that I want to go over is a little disheartening, but also comes with a glimmer of good news to it. A disclaimer first though. He only works on the CPU side of the company, so he could be wrong. It's, it's doubtful though. Either way, the bad news is that Vega 11 isn't an upcoming mid-range GPU stack like we originally thought. Of course, with the RX 500 series just launching, that's not too surprising. Still, we've heard murmurs about Vega 11 that goes all the way back to Vega's initial announcement nearly a year ago. No, instead, Vega 11, at least according to James Pryor, is only a GPU baked in their Raven Ridge APUs. And here's the good news. That means Vega on APUs actually isn't done yet. We know about Vega 8 and Vega 10 with corresponding compute units to the number. That means Vega 11 has yet to show and should be packed with 11 compute units, which means the best we see out of Ryzen 7 mobile APUs isn't the best AMD has to offer. Of course, that could just be speculation, but more than likely, it'll probably be part of the desktop APUs that are going to be coming soon. So while that does it for today, let me know what you think about the news from the interview. Excited to hear more about Ryzen 2 or just upset about Vega 11? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the GamerMail Discord server. If you have hardware questions or just want to talk about gaming, that's in the description below. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggest a video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.